I'm talking with expat Australian composer, cellist and musician Benjamin Skepper, who's involved in an exhibition and installation that opens this week at the Arts Centre. It's called Sight and Sound. It's subtitled, Benjamin, is Abstraction in Australian Art. How does that inform the music that you've created for the project? Well, more than really looking at the theory behind you know, abstract painting and abstract art and perhaps abstract music, if you like, um, I've collaborated with uh, John Aslanides and we've been talking for many years about doing a collaboration. Um, I think the way that I've responded to his work has definitely been very um, physical um, as opposed to sitting down and trying to write a score based on something. So when I was given a commission from Stephen Tonkin, um, who, a very innovative curator down at the Art Centre, um, I was really excited to then be given the opportunity to explore the relationship that John and I had wanted to um, explore in our collaborative work. Because John also considers himself, and I won't speak too much for him, but you know, to be a sound artist as well, though he um, represents his work in a visual medium, and the way I responded to his work was definitely very physical in that sense and really exciting that I was able to take um, his painting. And there's also a manuscript that I've produced that's also on display at the Art Centre. Um, and, you know, you, using his work directly as a manuscript, for the, or I call it a sound map, um, of my composition. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of theory and architectural construction behind the work, but the way that we've collaborated together is definitely um, beyond... Um, theoretical practice, if, if that makes sense. It's really very much about um, how we respond to each other's work, his being visual and mine being sonic. Um, so, yeah, it's really exciting that I think um, Stephen Tonkin's come up with this great idea to underscore the relationship between visual art and music, whether it be abstract or not. I think it's really exciting that, um, you know, now we've got this chance in Melbourne to see a really, you know, progressive exhibition. So I urge people to get down and have a look. And the way that the exhibition, um, it might be a bit confusing to some people if they don't read all the text that's around, but it's a 40-minute loop of um, compositions that are in sync with each of the paintings. So if you really want to get the whole sonic audio visual experience, um, you need to be there for the whole 40 minutes so you can hear all of the music and the way that it relates to the work. The, the, the visual artworks as well. So. It's intriguing for me. You, you describe the, the the kind of the musicality in John's work. For me, looking at some of John's pictures, there it, it's even more than musicality. It almost directly seems to reference things like sound waves and the interaction sound of waves. Yeah, sound definitely. waves. Definitely, yeah, it's, it's exciting. And so, it's so how? Ha- you know, because I think collaboration is a really it's a very difficult thing to do well. Um, and you know I've been collaborating with um, as I said fashion designers and I'm just about to head off to Paris next week um, to play at Paris Fashion Week and again I'm collaborating with um, another Japanese fashion designer and you know collaboration for me really represents an idea of having an affinity with um, the person who's creating whatever their medium may be and you know in John's sense it's visual and then you know again with fashion design and clothing um, and having done a lot of different collaboration with different artists of different genres, um, I realise as well I'm a very 3D person, if that makes sense. I mean, John's work is 2D and clothes may be viewed as 2D as well, but I, I really respond to work that I feel is 3D and it gives me a very um, 3D notion to my sound as well. Um, and it's interesting with, um, with the speaker installation at the Art Centre. So we've got a stereo set up, so there's a left speaker and a right speaker. So hopefully the experience of the sound there will be um, physical as well. Um, I have a speaker sponsor in Tokyo. Um, they're called Taguchi, and they do some really state-of-the-art um, speakers there. And we're looking at doing quadraphonic and multiphonic speaker um, sound installations as well with, you know, 40-odd speakers and, you know, really getting into a physical experience of sound as well. So that's something I'm really looking forward to exploring more in the future and hopefully presenting here in Australia as well. Well, you, you do now live and base yourself in Tokyo. The, the work we introduced this interview with, which I presume is a relatively new composition and performance because it does accompany directly one of um, John's paintings. Yeah. One of the things I hear in that, and, and I know that Peter Sculthorpe particularly used it a lot as a technique, was to use glissando in strings to try and reference bird songs to, to, to have a sense of Australian landscape and so on. Is that something that you sometimes hear in your work, a sense of your Australian heritage that you perhaps didn't even know was there? Yeah, that's interesting. You said that, that could be um, a subliminal power that's acting upon me. I'm not sure. I haven't really thought about it, to tell you the truth. 
Um, but it's funny you should reference Birdsong because that um, my cello teacher at the time, Mr. Kieran Casey, um, he taught me about um, how to do that glissandi sound, and he um, remarked to me that it was like shooting a duck out of the sky, and the duck <laughs> well winching back down to earth. <laughs> The metaphor for the sound. Oh, that's a lovely so, thought. <laughs> I thought that was quite um, <laughs> poetic, but not really my take on how it sounds. But certainly, I think with the cello as well, I mean, it's a really great instrument for um, cross-collaboration and improvisation as well. As I said, I've been playing harpsichord in the last year in Tokyo as well. And I love harpsichord. I think it's just such a beautiful, divine instrument. Um, but the cello is it's very free and it's I mean it feels like to me it's like another extension really of my body, like another person that I'm playing. Um and you know, I've really been able to explore um I think through departure from my classical upbringing as well, but explore the different sounds and textures you can draw out of the instrument without having to use um digital effects and synthesized um sounds. Like you can actually draw a lot of really what seem like kind of crazy sounds out of out of the instrument itself and you know, um, I think the next song you said you were going to play is called Marionette. That's correct. That song um, is also for multi-part violin cello. And again, um, I've I've sought to really um, draw as many different sounds out of my cello as I can without having to refer to um, digital apparatus, if that makes sense. So that's really something I'm really focusing on with my current work, again, with harpsichord and my next solo album, which is about to come out in the next month, I hope. Um, focusing on using things like sewing machines and music boxes and obviously my heart's got in cello, but other objects that can create sounds um, from an object rather than from a computer synthesized system. So I'm really excited about, about that element as well, being able to showcase sound that's produced from objects rather than sounds that are produced from machines, if that makes sense. So Benjamin Skepper, where can people track down your music? At the moment, through my website, which is www.maison m-a-i-s-o-n hyphen d-e hyphen contrapuntal c-o-n-t-r-a-p-u-n-t-a-l dot com or these days what they call a Google search it's pretty easy so you can type my name into Google and my website should come up the top Well that name is Benjamin Skepper thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat this afternoon the exhibition and installation is called Sight and Sound Music and Abstraction in Australian Art it's happening down at the Melbourne Arts Centre it's running right through until September so you have plenty of time to investigate it within Gallery 1 at the Victorian Arts Centre we are going out with a track entitled entitled Marionette. For listeners who didn't quite catch that URL, I'll post it on my website or on the Triple R website sometime later this evening. Benjamin Skepper, it's been an absolute pleasure. Fantastic. Thanks so much for having me. This is the music of Benjamin Skepper, a work entitled Marionette.